Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to my HTML5 help tutorial series, and today we're going to stick with Canvas. If you didn't watch part one, definitely watch that before this, because I'm just going to jump right in there, and you might not understand what I'm doing here. So this is all of the information from the last tutorial, and actually, I slipped something into this guy just to see if you would have noticed from the last tutorial. This time, we're going to cover lines, paths, arcs, and text. But you may notice that this should actually be a circle, but it's showing up as a simple ellipse. Why is that? Well, the reason why is whenever you define the height and the width, like we did here, based off of the fact that Canvas was defined with a width and a height of 500 and 400, whenever you then style this inside of Canvas using style.height, what it actually does is stretch it. Very surprised nobody caught on to that. You guys normally catch on to everything I do. I'm gonna show you how to fix that. First, what I'm gonna do is save this background as white just to make things a little bit easier to see. And then I'm gonna show you the proper way inside of Canvas to define the width and the height. It's real simple, just go like this. And let's just say we want to 600 pixels like we did before and then just change this to height jump over here and now you can see that it is a perfect circle and if you can't see you, this is an HD video feel free to watch it full screen but for the most part everything's gonna be pretty big here another thing that I'm gonna do that I forgot to tell you about last time is I'm gonna define the border for this guy and how you do that meaning the canvas itself what we're gonna be drawing inside of and you just go style dot border is equal to and you can define anything you would define in basic HTML so let's Let's just say we want to do dotted. You could also do solid, dash, dot, double groove, ridge, inset, outset. If you don't know what any of those mean, you can check out my CSS tutorial, which you guys probably do. And we're just going to do that, and we're going to reload this, and now we're going to have the whole entire canvas inside of dotted lines here on the screen on the right side of the screen. Then what I'm going to do, because we're working on a brand new tutorial, I'm going to delete out everything I did last time, because we don't need that. Right down to this point right here, so delete. And everything from this point is going to be all brand new. We have to, of course, call Canvas Draw 1, just like we did before, because we're going to be drawing on the canvas, and this is how you do it. And if you want to draw a line or a path, you have to follow that with a function called Begin Path. Real simple, that's it. You just need to remember that anytime you're trying to draw those, that you need to start with that function. Then if we want to also define, say, our width, meaning the width of the line that we're going to be drawing. Just type in line width, and all this code's available in a link underneath the video if you want to get it. And that's all you need to do if you want to be able to change that width. And then also if we wanted to change like the stroke style, meaning the color, stroke style. And then let's say we want to make it purple, and that's how you would do that. And then anytime you want to draw a line or a path inside of Canvas for HTML5, what you have to do is you have to actually move your pointer to the position where you want to start drawing. And the function, just like a pencil onto a paper, before you can start to draw. So let's say we want to start drawing starting at the point 25 pixels to the right and 25 pixels downwards. Well, okay, we got our pencil in position and now we need to start drawing. If we want to draw to another point from this point right here, all we got to do is go line two and let's say we want to draw to the 300 pixel mark. Well, we just do it like that. And then finally, if we want to draw said line, we just go canvas draw one again and type in stroke. You're going to see the line draw. And and there it is. Draw it right there on screen. And you can change all the line widths and all those other different things. There's not really that many other different things you can do with lines. Of course, you can continue with line drawing. Let's just copy this guy. You want to draw from this point here to another point. No problem. Let's say you want to go from 300 in back up to 25. And there you go. You just drew that line inside of there. Now, if we want to change these ending points for these lines, there's a couple different things that we can do there. Canvas draw one, come in here, and it just has to show up before stroke is issued. And if we wanted to find that ending point, there's basically only one, but I mean, technically there's three. Line cap, by default, it's called butt, <laughs> and it's literally B-U-T-T. -T. Yes, that's what the default is, and that's what you see on the screen. It's just basically squared off. Well, you also have square, which is exactly the same as butt, except it protrudes a little bit further out, which is kind of strange. And the one that really looks different is round. So we change that, and you can see the lines here are rounded off at the end. And if you want to change these line join areas, function you're going to use in that situation, come down here, you go line join is equal to, and it's miter, which is just a point by default, M-I-T-E-R. And of course, you could also define it as round, and you can see it rounded off. And you could also define it as bevel, and it sort of has this cut off, squared off, angle to it. And those are all of the different ways that you can draw paths and lines. However, if you want to automatically take this last drawn line and connect it to the first point, well, canvas draw one, and you just type in close path. 
reload, and it automatically will close that path off for you. So those are all of the different ways that you can draw with those. Now there's a save feature as well as a restore, and basically what that does is it saves and restores stroke styles and line widths and all those different things. And just to save some time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually grab this guy down to the end. Let's copy that, paste in there. Remember, beginning path is going to start this guy. So that's where the new drawing is going to occur. And just so it stands out, I'm going to change this from 10 to 15, and I'm going to change this to green, change this to 100, change this to 400, 350, 425. Just leave it like that. And if we file save it, reload it, you're going to see it drew this green on here, and it applied the stroke changes as well as the width changes that we defined both here, right there, and right there. When I was talking about the save feature, what you can do is so you, you want to save the stroke and the fills and all these other different things inside of here. All we're going to do is go canvas draw one, copy, paste that in there, type in save. And it's going to save in the background all of the things that you defined right inside of here. And then if we move down here right before stroke is called, which actually draws everything on the screen, and we go canvas draw, restore, and close that off. Remember, it's going to restore all the things that were defined up here. You can see it drew exactly the same thing, just the dimensions are different, meaning the beginning points and the end points and all that. There's just another little little kind of neat thing that some people don't know about. Now there was a lot of confusion in regards to how arcs work and I'm actually going to come in here clear rectangle and I'm going to use this to delete out everything that we just drew here on the screen just as a kind of a review on how you clear the canvas and there you are. It's all cleared up and now I'm going to focus in on arcs and the main confusion here is that Whenever you're drawing with the arc function, you are using radians and not degrees. And I'm going to give a bunch of examples so this is 100% understandable. But basically, the arc function, first you're going to define the center point. Just think of this like a circle. It's the center part of the circle, and that's going to be x and then y. x, of course, is from the left side to the right, and then y is up and down. Or in this situation, it's going to be down from this top point here where the canvas is being defined. Then what you need to define inside of arc is the radius, which is just half of the circle, just to keep it simple, half of the arc, whatever. And then you're going to define your start angle, and then you're going to define your end angle, and then you're going to define if you want this to be drawn counterclockwise or not. If you choose to draw out your arc clockwise, well, that's a default so you don't need to worry about that. But if you want it to be drawn counterclockwise, you're going to have to put true inside of there. And now I'm going to show you a whole bunch of different examples. Okay, just like before, and we got to get rid of this guy. I'm going to use canvas draw again. And there we're going to just put arcs inside there so you can see. All right, if you want to start drawing an arc, again, just like we did before with lines, you're going to go begin path. And that's it. Now, if you want to draw a circle, for example, remember we're using radians and not degrees. I'm going to show you an example on how to use degrees if you prefer to use degrees. Let's say we want to start 300 pixels from the right, 300 pixels from the top, and what I'm talking about here is the canvas, 200 radius, and I want to start at the zero radians, and then two times math, call the math function inside of JavaScript, and then false, I don't want this drawn counterclockwise. And you're going to see here in a second exactly how that works itself out. And just like we did with lines, we're going to make a call to stroke. File save it, reload it, and you can see it drew a perfect circle on the screen. Mainly because inside of radians, this is the zero point as well as 2 times pi is that exact same point. And here I'm going to give you an example if you wanted to actually show this based off of using degrees. All right, so let's go to degree 2. Draw. So let's say we want to draw in 90 degrees. Well, if you want to convert 90 degrees to radians, and let's just call this radian to draw, well, all you'd have to do is pass it inside of here. Math dot pi divided by 180 times degree to draw, right like that. And then what we're going to do is copy radian to draw, right like that. And inside of here, we're going to paste that variable inside of there. Reload. And you can see this is the zero part and it drew 90 degrees down to this part right inside of there. So if you want to use degrees instead of using radians, that's perfectly fine. And if we change this guy to true, I'll save, it's going to draw from this part the whole way down to here and cut out the part that was previously drawn onto the screen because it's trying to get down here, but you're telling it it can only go counterclockwise, and that's why it's 180 degrees. I'll save. 
reload and it's going to draw again from this part over to here and if you change this to false i'll say reload you're going to see it's going to draw the bottom part and of course if you wanted to close the path which means automatically close the beginning point and connect it to the ending point close path called and it's going to work just like it did with the paths and strings as you can see there and also with arcs you can also define fill style this is a mistake that a lot of people make though I'm going to show you if you type in red and you defined your fill style and you file saved it you might expect this to be filled with red guess what it's not if you want that fill to take effect you're actually gonna to have to call the fill function file save and now it's filled with red and of course, all these stylings need to be made before the stroke function is called, which actually draws everything onto the canvas. And then as a final thing, I'm going to show you how text works inside here. So let's say we want to go I'm going to create a string to draw. And I'm just going to call it sample. Our sample string is going to be what's in there. And you can define the font just by calling font equal to and let's say we make this 40 point Arial that will work and also there's something called fill text as well as stroke text fill text is a function that draws the fill part or the inner part of any of the text onto the screen and stroke will draw any strokes or paths that go around that text but first we got to define our fill style and let's say we might get red and uh, stroke style and just so that it shows up nice on the screen I'm gonna say black and now you're gonna see fill text and then inside of here we're going to put this variable for this string we created and we're going to say we want to draw in the 100 pixels to the right from this upper corner of the canvas and down 100 pixels file save reload and you can see that there is sample string and just to make this simple to show you how to draw the stroke just call stroke text and also because I can't remember what the width is for this stroke that's going to go around this text I'm going to come in here and define it so I'm going to type line width and this is how you define the width of the stroke that's going to go around this text and I'm going to set it at two pixels file save reload it and there you can see that it drew both the fill part as well as the stroke part and if we increase the stroke up largely you can see that it completely obliterates the fill part inside of that guy final thing I'm going to show you is actually kind of silly. You can sort of kind of measure the length of the text that's on the screen. Uh, the reason I say sort of kind of is because it's not exact and it doesn't always give proper information. What I'm basically saying is the length of the string here on the screen. So if you would want to measure that, there is a function that you call that is called measure text. And again, you're going to copy this guy right here. Paste your string inside of there. Var width of text create another function and then you can call this is actually an object that's returned here so you can call a function called width and it's going to return the width for you and then let's jump up here and print this new measurement of the text to the screen and instead we'll put it at the 200 200 point mark file save reload and it says it's 331 pixels wide might be right might be wrong and aside from that, the only other two things that you can define in regards to properties, just like you do a line width up here, you can also define text, a line, and I'm going to get more into this later on. And it has the available properties of start, end, left, center, and right. And you can also define text, baseline, which is either alphabetic, top, middle, or bottom. Leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.